Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the introduction of my person, of my topic. Welcome, everybody, to my today's presentation. Before I want to start my presentation, I would also like to introduce co-authors who contributed to the today's presentation, which are Anatoly uh, Strangwiller, uh, she is uh, my supervisor and head of the Institute for Metal and Library Structures at the University of Duisburg Essen, the Institute plus the Civil Engineering Department, and also uh, Mr. Andreas Gern and Maria Möffel, who are working for Tristan Krupsbier uh, Europe, located in Duisburg, Germany. Um, and I would like to tell you today uh, the results of ongoing investigations that we currently perform at our uh, university concerning very variable amplitude tests at uh, high frequency hammer peak welded alpha high strength structures near than at less than 100. Okay, so first the structure of my today's presentation. I will start, uh, I will start with a short motivation, uh, what's meant by ultra high strength steels and in which uh, application or in which structures these steel grades uh, are applied. Then I will introduce you a post uh, treatment method to improve the fatigue behavior, namely uh, high frequency hammer peening. And afterwards, I would like to uh, uh, present the fatigue tests with variable amplitudes that we have performed. <coughs> So, motivation. Uh, currently, the steel producers offer steel grades, or structural steel grades, with yield strengths up to 1300 megapascal. And these ultra high strength, fine grain structural steels are often implied in uh, mobile grade structures, as you can see here, to reduce the dead load of the system and to increase the ratio of service loads to dead loads, which leads to more uh, effective structures. However, uh, these uh, structures uh, consist of uh, welded joints of welded components and uh, due to the variable loading, variable service loading, these structures have a limited lifetime due to fatigue. And the fatigue life of these structures can be classified into the upper final fatigue uh, life region as these structures have a very high uh, stress ranges. And one uh, possibility to improve the fatigue behavior Structures or to improve the fatigue of welded joints is that the application of post weld treatment methods. And in our study, we investigated the effect of high frequency hammer peening on the fatigue behavior. And the uh, method works that you have a, a indenta of the tool which accelerates against the weld tool surface, which is the fatigue critical point of the uh, system. And by this, you uh, uh, you plastically deform the, weld, the notch at the belt toe, resulting in a rounding, so leading to a, a reduced stress concentration at the, at the notch. And you also have some effect of cold hardening, uh, that you increase uh, the, yields, the local yield strength of the material, but uh, the most beneficial effect of this procedure is due to the modified visible stress state. state. So you, uh, integrate, you induce compressive residual stresses, which are the main, uh, most, or the major part, the main, major effect why uh, this uh, post well treatment method leads to increased fatigue behavior. In the past, we already performed some fatigue tests at welded uh, ultra high strength steels S960, S1100, and S1300 with constant amplitude loading with the stress ratio R equal to 0 0.1. The results of these, these investigations were also, uh, presented in the last DCF in one time. And here you have uh, the results again. The, the diagram is related to uh, the, the mean value of the peak strength for the s welded toe condition to, to, to show you the results of different notch details in one diagram. We have, we have different notch details, color plate, longitudinal stiffener, transversal stiffener, and butt weld. And the red symbols represent the results of the S welded untreated token, and the blue symbols represent the results of the post weld treated or high frequency hard paint uh, uh, treated uh, uh, token. And as you can see from the S welded toe condition, the, the, uh, the SN line or the uh, fatigue strength can be described to the uh, line with a slope of n equals to 3. And if you apply the high frequency hammer peening, you get a transition of the uh, SN line to higher fatigue strength and also a, trans uh, also a rotation of the SN line due to the modified residual stress state. 
leading to higher fatigue lives and leading to a fatigue strength of at least twice the fatigue strength of CS value to condition. At, at higher stress ranges, you have a lower uh, uh, fatigue life increase because uh, the residual stress is relaxed uh, yeah, faster than at lower, uh, fatigue strength, uh, lower, at lower stresses. And these results were performed with, co uh, fatigue tests with constant amplitude loads. And, but in the, during the structure, you don't have constant amplitudes, you have service loads, variable amplitudes. And the question was, okay, if you have high stress ranges during the structures, does it have a negative influence on the residual stress or on the, on the fatigue life, which, uh, uh, the, yeah, on the, on the fatigue life. For this reason, we performed additional tests with operational-like loading with variable amplitudes. And the, uh, as I said, the, the steel grains are applied in mobile train structures. And before we started the test, we had very good literature where uh, load measurements or where measurements at existing uh, mobile train structures were done to uh, characterize the spectrum or the shape of the spectrum of, this, uh, of, the, of these structures. This is represented by the green lines, so the spectrum can be uh, characterized by a Gaussian like spectrum. The stress ratio we choose to R equals uh, 0.1 to compare the results with our existing results. And uh, we also applied a random load time function because if you uh, apply a blockwise, uh, or like perform a blockwise test, then you will achieve higher fatigue loads because of the uh, mean stress effect. To compare the results of the constant amplitude load test with the variable load test, load test we made a damage accumulation with a minor element terminal rule uh, uh, because the shape of the uh, spectrum was uh, Gaussian like, so that we, and, and the stress range was very high, so that we applied the minor element terminal rule. The test program, as I said, is an ongoing, uh, ongoing project, and today I would like to uh, present the results for the two different notch details, well the transverse and stiffener, and well the butt valve with transition and sickness, and we will also perform for the test with uh, longitudinal stiffener and cover plate. The steel grade was uh, structure, the high strength structural steel grade, has 100 is a heat strength of 1100 megapascal, the product name is uh, XARGO 1100, and we uh, uh, divided the test specimens in an s welded torque condition and a high frequency hammer beam torque condition. The amount of test results is rather low if you uh, uh, want to test the, 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 the fatigue strength, but we focus on the upper finite fatigue life region. So if you want to validate this uh, results, you also have to perform some more tests for statistical evidence. Uh, the thickness of the plates were very low, uh, 6 mm and 6 to 8 mm for the notch detail but with the transitioning thickness. And here's also the, the, the maximum membrane stress. Uh, applied in the, in the, in the uh, tests related to the yield strength, so we had maximum stresses close to the yield strength. Uh, for the notch detail uh, uh, butt belt, we had a, a deliberate misalignment in the, uh, in the specimen because uh, the specimens were aligned on the wood side, so, and due to the uh, different thicknesses, we had a, a misalignment of one millimeter. And uh, before the test, we measured the, uh, the imperfections of the specimens and also had some. Uh, angular misalignment because due to the low thickness these specimens are uh, uh, prone to uh, angular misalignment but it was not in that magnitude as a uh, uh, linear misalignment and so we uh, uh, considered this effect by a stress magnification factor and uh, as a fatigue life of the specimens just to bending are higher than specimens tested to actual loading we divided this the bending moment by a factor of 1.2, which is based on the uh, vector mechanics analysis done by uh, Gurney and also some evaluation of uh, existing fatigue test results with bending and extra loading uh, done by Mellox. So right here are the results for this. Uh, we had different uh, crack initiation size for the as well toe conditions. All specimens fell from the uh, well toe, which is as expected, but for the high frequency hammer peat uh, toe conditions. Uh, the crack initiation uh, uh, changes to the, the, for some uh, just the base material, which was observed for rather low uh, stress ranges because uh, at higher stress ranges the residual stresses relax uh, faster, so that then for higher stress ranges you have 
the, uh, the fatigue went at the uh, well toe, but for lower for, uh, for stress ranges, also other notches become diseases. So uh, during design of the structure, if you want to use this method, you have to be aware that you have to check other notches uh, near, near the well. Near the well. So here are the results for the, uh, the two uh, the two tested notch details. I'll start with the back belt. Let me first explain the, the diagram here on the left side. You can see the uh, nominal stress range, which means for the back belt with transition thickness, the uh, membrane stress uh, multiplied by the stress magnification factor in the load cycles. The um, black symbols represent the test results for the as well the toe condition, and the gray symbols represent the uh, test results for the high frequency hammer peak toe conditions, and the triangular symbols represents the results for the constant amplitude load test and the circle uh, represents the results for the very amplitude fatigue uh, test. But as you can see, for the SL2 condition, the SL line can be approximated with the slope of M equals to 3 and for the high frequency hammer peak toe condition, the SL line can be approximated with the slope of M equals to 5. And if you look at the results of the very amplitude fatigue test, which are uh, in this left triangle uh, visualized, by the maximum stress range of each uh, uh, spectrum applied for the, to, to the test. You can see that you have a fatigue life increase, uh, uh, although you have very high stress ranges close to the yield strength for this example by a factor of uh, four. And if you uh, compare the results of the variable amplitude test with a constant amplitude load test, it's on the right, where we applied the uh, minor rule to, to the, the it can calculate the equivalent stress range. The, the, the results of the variable amplitude, the circles are in good agreement with the results from the constant amplitude load test. And if we uh, consider this ratio from uh, the fatigue strength from the uh, constant amplitude load tests, representing 50% survival probability, these two values, then this would uh, correspond to a fatigue class increase of plus 9 for the uh, fatigue classes due to a high frequency number. And for the, these are the results for the transversal stiffener. Uh, you can see the, the, the same observation as for the butt weld, that uh, the slopes can be described with M to 3 for the as well tour condition and M to 5 for the high frequency number peak tour condition. And also for very high spread, you could see for the as well if you are Above the yield strength, of course, you will have a flattening of the SL line. But if you are below the yield strength, you can approximate the SL line with a line and leading to a fatigue life increase of factor 4 for, yield, for stress ranges equal to the yield strength of the material. And also the comparison of the results from the constant amplitude load test with the very amplitude load tests by the minor rule. Uh, uh, so see that the results of the very amplitude uh, low test are in good agreement with the constant amplitude low test and the fatigue strength results in a plus 8 FRT classes due to a high frequency hammer peak training. And the last one is the comparison of the, the damage accumulation. We uh, calculated the damage sum for each specimen from the very amplitude test by dividing the uh, experimental fatigue lives and the say rate. Or the theoretical uh, fatigue lives calculated with the uh, fatigue strengths of the constant, constant amplitude load tests and applying the minor rule. And as you can see, the gray symbols are the uh, test results for the high frequency hammer peak toe condition, and the black uh, symbols are the results for the as well toe conditions. You will have the damage sum for at least 1.3 for the A as well as toe conditions and 0.8 uh, for the high frequency hammer peak toe conditions and all these are higher than 0.5 which is a recommended value uh, by uh, in the recommend uh, in the recommendation for fatigue design uh, which is uh, public, uh, published by the International Institute for Welding which is only valid for as well as toe conditions but our results confirm that you can also use this damage sum for high frequency MRP to condition. However, this, these are the ongoing project and the number of test results is rather small, so if, uh, for the validation of these uh, results we will have to perform further tests. So let me conclude. The slopes of the SN line for both loading types could be approximated with M equals equal to 3 for the SL2 conditions and M equal to 5 for the high frequency MRP conditions. And for the, uh, 
for the high frequency heartbeat test specimens, we achieved a fatigue life increase by a factor of four in the level of the amplitude uh, fatigue test uh, for maximum stresses close to the yield strings, resulting in a fatigue class increase by a plus nine FRT classes for the large detail bar 12 and plus eight FRT classes for the transverse instead by due to a high frequency MRP, high frequency MRP. And the calculated damage sums are all higher than the recommended value by the IRW, uh, uh, by the International Institute for Value. The outlook will perform further uh, value of the amplitude load test for additional uh, notch details, longitudinal stiffener and cover plate. And we would also like to apply some preloads close to the yield strength before we start the value, where we have the amplitude load test to prove if, the, if this preloads have an influence on the residual stress spread or the fatigue life of the specimens. Last but not least, I want to like the company DIPA who valued uh, all the specimens for us to ensure practical like value conditions. So finally, I'm at the end of my presentation and I would like to thank you for your attention and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you.